podcast. I'm Chad. And I'm Justin. And we're going to talk about Richmond. We're going to look forward to Bristol Dirt. Um, we've got quite a bit to talk about here. What happened at Richmond, uh, the penalties with Colleague and Denny Hamlin's appeal. Um, but first, I have to give a really big, big shout out to my son, Eric. He is working on, he's the computer guy of the family, right? My wife, is, she's way better with computers than I am. I don't know nothing. I, I can push some buttons, but that's about it. My wife does quite a bit of that, and my son does a lot. Everybody in the family is more than I am with computers, but he's making a website for us, uh, ridingthewall.com. You can go ahead to that. It's already up and going. Um, and I've, I've seen a little preview of that, and he, he he's done a hell of a job with it. I mean, I, I wouldn't even know where to start on doing stuff like that, but yeah. he... Eric made it look pretty awesome. He is. He has made it look great. Um, you can go to the website, and then it will link you to our all of our podcasts, past and current. It has our league standings. They're up to date, and they're pretty detailed. And he's working on it to where, and I don't know if this is going to happen, but he's working on it, so he's trying. But uh, to get it to where, as soon as the race is over, it just links into the standings, and it's automatically updated. Yeah, that's awesome. That would be... <laughs> Game that's what changer. I said. Yeah, that's what I said. I can throw my calculator away. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, hopefully in the future, maybe we can get some uh, stuff up there, maybe sell some koozies, t-shirts, whatever, if we get that far. Um, that's in the plans, but I uh, just wanted to give him a big, big shout-out. Absolutely. Thank you, Eric. Yeah, thank you very much. He's doing a hell of a job on that, so keep up the good work. Um, the penalties... Let's just jump right into this. The penalties for Colleg and Hamlin uh, should be out sometime today. We're recording this on Wednesday, um, and they're not out yet. I would have thought for sure they would have been out. It's currently 435, but uh, they're not out, so we don't know what, what we should be expecting. Uh, well, what I expect is the same thing that Hendrick got. Um, the points will be returned. We'll get... Um, the crew chief will stay suspended for the 31 car and uh, the monetary fine of a hundred thousand dollars but um is she gonna say something no i was gonna, just gonna say st- uh, he will be suspended not stay suspended because yeah, like you mentioned earlier you know he's talking and uh he hasn't taken his suspension yet he's waiting on the appeal so right hendrick went ahead and suspended theirs um to see what the appeal process was going to say, but they went ahead and started their appeal, or um, I'm sorry, their suspension. Colleague did not, so um, depending on what this appeal says, Colleague may be, the 31 car may be without his crew chief for the next four races. But for Hendrick, uh, Bristol will be their last uh, suspended race. They should all be back by Martinsville. And uh, we're also waiting on the Denny Hamlin appeal for uh, his admitting that he wrecked Ross Chastain at uh, the closing laps there at Phoenix. So we'll see how that goes. I don't really I don't really expect anything to change as far as that one goes. I don't either. Um, it's just a $50,000 monetary fine. I think they're going to uphold that. Um, anything different than that would, sus- would surprise me. Um, you got anything to add to the penalties? No. 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 Um, which kind of brings me into one, one topic I want to talk about is the penalties and the appeal process. Um, NASCAR has the penalties to deter teams from messing with the car, right? They don't want you to mess with the car. It keeps the playing field level and they've been pretty strict and forward with don't touch it. You will get penalized, and you will get penalized heavily. But as we're seeing, this appeal board is basically kind of doing what they want with the penalties. Some they uphold, some they do not. Some they kind of half and half uphold half of it and and don't with the others. So should NASCAR tweak their penalty process? Um, I don't think so. I think they need to give it a little bit more time. Now that they've got the appeals board implemented into the system, mm-hmm. you know I don't think you I don't think you need to go 
a month into having the appeals board there and be like, ah, this ain't working. You know, I think they need to give it a season. Yeah. And make the decision after that. You know, once that first season of the appeals board has been in place, then revisit it, you know. But I, I, I'd say NASCAR, as level-headed as they can be sometimes, sometimes not so much. But I would say when they sat down with this appeals board before they got put in place, they said, here's the reason we would like an appeals board. We want to make sure all the teams are playing by the same rules. We want to make sure all the cars are not being touched. We don't We don't want, we, we got zero tolerance for these issues right now. Right. So I don't even think they would have implemented the appeals board if they couldn't get them on the same page that they were on. So I think the appeals board is a good thing. I think it's a very good thing. Right. Um, but the... Uh, as far as the appeals board turning over half the things that they say or do, you know, I think it's just going to have to be one of them things where the commissioner of the appeals board goes to, you know, Mr. France and says, hey, here's why we overturned it, you know. Yeah. they got to have that open communication. Right. And maybe they... Maybe they conversate before it gets overturned, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, again, like most things in life, you know, communication's key. So, uh, I I think it's a it's a step in the right direction. I don't think it's going to be flawless this first year, but right, it's a step yeah. in the right direction. You've always got kinks to work out, right? And that's where that's the process that we're in right now. And maybe. I think the appeals board is a very good thing, like you said, because you don't want the overseeing commissioners or whatever overseeing um, people to be judge, jury, and executioner. Right. Because um, then the rules can become unfair at any time, but you've always got that third party with the appeals board. But like you said, they need to be, you know, we overturned this part because of this, or we, we upheld that because of this. Um, you know, give reasons as to why you're overturning or upholding um, certain parts of the rules and maybe and I don't know I've n- I have never read the NASCAR rule book but maybe some of these rules just need to be a little bit more cut and dry maybe there is still some gray area that is being played with by the teams and crews which is just part of the sport you know it's been there from day one you know and it's always now you be ask there. any race car driver that's ever been involved in any race Right. It's not what the rules say, it's what the rules don't say. Exactly. So you're always looking for what it don't it say. It don't say I could put nitrous on my car. Exactly. So <laughs> why is that illegal? <laughs> but and you're always gonna and I love that part of the sport. That's right. the part that that's the part of the sport that makes it unique and 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 a uh it's not just a bunch of rednecks out there driving around in circles, but these guys are also thinking of how to get the advantage on something. And, uh, and, and that's how it's always been, you know. Yep. It's you, all you about the loophole. Exactly. Even even the great Larry McReynolds says it's all about finding that extra little bit of something that the other guys don't have that gives you that little bit of advantage. It might be half of a second that it gives you, but that's huge on a racetrack, you know. <clears throat> So I wanted to discuss that just a little bit about them, the rules and the penalties and um, wondering if they should just go with, if, if NASCAR wants to really make the rules stick, is the monetary fine really important? Because, I mean, at this level, is $400,000 really anything to Rick Hendrick? I, I mean, it's not, no, it's not chump change, that's for sure. It's, it's definitely a good penalty but it's not something that he can't overcome within two weeks of racing or one week of racing or whatever the case may be maybe they should just go with points only maybe that would be tougher for the appeals board to overturn you know if they want to hit the teams hard and really send that clear message of don't mess with the cars maybe it should just be a really steep points penalty you know something along those lines yeah yeah, that's true. I mean, that, that would affect the teams more, but I mean, I, I feel like you got to keep the monetary penalties there too, just because 
I mean, if it happens three times in a year, you know, it's a, uh, it's really going to cripple somebody, you know, yeah. um, and surely it wouldn't, but you never know. But, you know, I mean, three times in a year is going to cripple the driver and the, and the team as well. Cause mm-hmm. I mean, hell that cripple anybody knock them right out of the playoffs, yeah. you know, um, but there may be some owners out there that really don't pay attention to the team until it starts affecting their wallet, you yeah. know? And I mean, I say that not knowing any of the owners, you know, but, uh, I, I obviously Hendrick is pretty involved. I mean, we, we see him and Childress and Petty and Stewart. We see them guys at the racetrack, you know, pretty often, mm-hmm. but there may be some out there that really don't pay no attention until it starts hitting their wallet. Yeah, that usually perks everybody up. Um, so let's talk about Richmond. Uh, we had quite a bit going on at Richmond, and I thought it was a very good race overall. Um, pretty good race. Uh, we had, let's see, I don't remember what lap it was. I don't have all the, the facts and the lap numbers in front of me, but um, just what I remember off the top of my head. You got Denny Hamlin spinning out J.J. Yaley, of all people, for whatever reason, I don't know. Um, now, early in the race, I think it was either, I think it was the first set of green flag pit stops. Denny Hamlin goes in, he gets a speeding penalty on pit road, comes back out, starts at the back, and he's he's got one of the best cars out there. You know, he's got a Gibbs car, it's a Gibbs track. All the Gibbs guys were fast, and he's moving back up through the field. And for whatever reason, he just takes it upon himself to spin out J.J. Yaley in the 15 car. Um, I bet he didn't admit to it, though. No, not this time. <laughs> <laughs> not this time. <laughs> but uh, even Clint Boyer, you know, when you're watching it, the announcers, Clint Boyer said that was pretty obviously on purpose. You know, so, and I think it takes a lot for an announcer to say that. Um, but Boyer's been in the car. He knows the situation, but just to give a little backstory, if you didn't see it, uh, Denny Hamlin's coming back up through the field, and J.J. Yaley was on his inside, and the 13 car of, I believe it was Chandler Smith, was on his outside, and they were coming out of turn four, um, and I guess neither of the two guys gave him, you know, they were they were fighting for positions, just like he was. So they wasn't giving him anything, and they don't need to, you know. They're not a lap down, so they're fighting for positions, and... It looked like he had plenty of room to hold his ground, but he backed out of it just a little bit. Got back into right in behind J.J. Yaley there on the inside and just ran it a little bit too deep into turn one and punted Yaley right off up into the wall. Um, for whatever reason, like I said, I don't know. Uh, he never really, not that I've heard, he hasn't discussed it. I don't know um, what his reaction to it was. But for a guy that's saying... There's no respect in the garage area. Well. And you're talking to guys <laughs> like the J.J. Yaley's or the... And J.J. Yaley's not new. He's, he's been around veteran. for years. Yeah. You know, he's been around for years. Um, and Chandler Smith, which is a younger guy coming up, they were giving him the respect. They were giving him the room. They were doing everything. They were racing like, him. Yes, they were racing him. They were racing him hard. But they were racing him. They wasn't doing dirty. And he just punts them. It almost feels like, well, if you're not going to give it to me, then screw you guys yeah you know yeah uh, that kind of mentality yeah. and and you know we've talked about this in episode one and two i know uh, maybe three as well but i'm not a denny hamlin fan for right. for reasons like that um he he says some pretty funny stuff cool stuff occasionally but he always goes right back to his true colors and uh it's stuff like this that just makes me not like the guy yeah and i've i've been I've been on the Denny Hamlin side of this whole Hamlin Ross Chastain feud, but to see him do something like that kind of, it's like why, you know, that just kind of soured me on well, him a little and, bit. Well, you know, I've always had that that taste in my mouth that Hamlin is that guy that your name's not at the top of marquee like mine. You just need to move. You know what I mean? Well, that's kind of what it showed on Sunday, right? By punting JJ. You know, I'm Denny Hamlin. Get out of my way. Right. And ain't ain't no room in this sport for that no there's because, not because 20 years ago it had its ass whooped for it <laughs> yeah you know what i mean and yeah. 
somebody been waiting for him as soon as he yeah. got out of that car and put him in a headlock. And it wouldn't have mattered if it's a big name or not, Mm-mm. you know. I would like to have seen him do that to Tony Stewart. You know? Yeah, he wouldn't have. <laughs> he wouldn't have done that to Senior. He wouldn't have done that to Stewart. You know, I mean, he he wouldn't do that to them guys because... Even Jeff Gordon would have tried dotting his eye. Right. <laughs> yeah. He'd have slapped him anyway. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I just thought that was kind of odd that somebody that's been right there alongside Kyle Busch saying, hey, there's no respect in the garage, and then you go out there and you do something pointless and stupid like that. It's just, it's uncalled for. Um, now, Denny's a good friend of the show, so I'm sure next time he calls in, I'll, I'll ask him about that, see what his see what his take on yeah, that was. He but, won't uh, admit it. No, you I'm can sure count on won't. that. No, I'm sure he won't. Um, <clears throat> let's see, we had... Uh, late well the last lap i'm gonna get to the better stuff here in just a second but right now we've got on the last couple of laps and they have a playback that you can find on youtube or you can look it up somewhere it has the playback of his radio audio uh between martin truex and his crew chief and i don't know if you've heard this or not yet but truex as the race went on he went in early and got an extra set of tires and nobody else did because um, his car was kind of handling a little funny he put on some new tires so once we get to the end of the race the rest of the field has one set of sticker tires and Truex doesn't have that he has one set of scuffs that had maybe six or seven laps on them so the rest of the field has stickers he's got scuffs so we get to the end of the race and he's got one of the most dominant cars on the track he's winning the race and had it not had we not had a late uh, I think it was uh, Reddick. Reddick spun with maybe 10, 12 laps to go, whatever it was. So that we everybody goes in, gets their last set of fresh stickers to make this run to the end. And Truex gets his scuffs on. Well, apparently, the uh, in the audio, you could Martin says this is a nightmare, and uh, crew chief, and I don't remember exactly, so I'm just kind of saying along the lines of. But his crew chief says something like, yeah, we hosed ourselves right there. Just fight through it and get to the end of the race. We hosed ourselves. He said, but he, he speaks with kind of an accent. This is the first time I'd ever heard Truex's crew chief. But he kind of talks with an accent. So if you're not ready for it, he is kind of hard to understand. Um, but Truex said, I don't have any idea what you said right there, but uh, this is messed up or something like that. <clears throat> And the guy says, we screwed ourselves, we only had, we had to put scuffs on it, um, we we hosed ourselves, is what he said. And Truex said something about, yeah, it would have been nice to know that. And the crew chief come back with, I didn't see a point in telling you. Now I see, I'm, I'm not a NASCAR driver obviously, but I see a big problem with that. First off... You have to tell the driver everything, even if he don't want to hear it, and it's not what he wants to hear, and he's going to get mad about it, he still needs to know. Because, yeah, he's the one handling that car. Right. You're paying this guy to put that car up front, so he has to know everything that he's dealing with to do that. And what, what did I just say 10 minutes ago? Communication. Communication is key. Period. That's right. And to hide something like that, whether you're the driver hiding it from your crew chief or you're the crew chief hiding it from the driver... There is two-way communication there that has to be there no matter what. Well, here's the thing. You're not going to hide it long. No. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, you might as well just tell them. Right. Obviously, Truex knew <laughs> something was going on. But, you know, he's... he's, And he was starting up front. I think after the pit pit stops, he, was, he wasn't leading the race, but he was right up there with him. I think he might have been starting mm-hmm. second row or something like that. I don't remember. Yeah, but. but they go green and that car's not handling like he's expecting it to he needs to know why so he can uh, he can make up for that he, he, he needs, needs to know do. it's the tires and ain't the driver of the car right you know i've got scuffs on so now i need to handle it like this you know because if he's running through them corners expecting need to shift sooner yeah if he's expecting that car to hold the corner like a sticker tire would but it's not he needs to know it's not a sticker tire you know so that way he can he can adjust before he gets into the corner yes <laughs> and it's going to kind of ruin some trust between the crew chief that's key right there and the that's driver. number one and you yeah. have to have that if you don't trust the guy that's in your ear 
you, he might as well not even be there. Put it in the truck. Yep. I mean, so you got to, as a driver, you have to trust what your crew chief is telling you, his strategy, and you have to trust your spotter. You know, um, those are just absolutely have to be there. And if you can't, if you feel you can't tell your driver something, there's a problem. Yeah. Um, even if he said, hey, this is what we're up against. You can either come in and we can put on these scuffs, or you can stay out with what you've got. That's up to you. You just let us know how you want to do it. That way it's up to me. You're it's the up one to the car. You're going to know. Right. Right. You know, we don't have no stickers. We just got scuffs. What do you want to do? That way he's part of the decision-making process, too. You know, that way if something goes bad, he can't blame it on you. It's both of you. You know, crew chief maybe made a bad call in the start of the race, but we're both figuring out how to deal with it, you know. Um, so that that's interesting. I think we'll probably hear more about that as the week well, goes I'd on. Well, I'd say Monday morning in the team meetings that it was probably discussed pretty pretty early into those team meetings. <laughs> and I'm sure Grandpa Joe probably grabbed them both up by the ear and put them in the chairs and had them talk it out. Yeah. You're not coming out the door until we, we're, you know. Fix it. Yeah, we're fixing it. But, you know, I mean, in, in a situation like that, and you know, obviously I ain't no NASCAR driver myself either, but... You know, he could have he could have even gave Truex the opportunity to say, leave the left sides on, put the scuffs on the right side, mm-hmm. and go with the two tire change. You know what I yeah. mean? And could have been better than what he had. Exactly. So, but at least he'd have been part of the process. You yeah. Know? <clears throat> so that's that happened. Um, I also want to talk about Josh Berry getting second place. Old man Barry's boy. Yeah, he did pretty good. He did. Pre- he did real good. I thought he was going to win that damn thing. <laughs> I knew. He I was pulling him. for him, even though he's going against Kyle Larson. And you know, I'm a Kyle Larson fan. That's my favorite driver. So I was still pulling for Barry to beat Larson. Yeah, I was glad to see him up there. I mean, you know, uh, sad event that happened to Chase. But you know, we talked about this in one of the earlier episodes. How Sometimes when things like this happen, you know, it, it gives the opportunity for a young gun to show what he can do. Maybe get a ride after Chase comes back, mm-hmm. you know. And uh, it, it, Josh Berry's been pretty impressive every week in the car. Yeah. But he had to pull second place out of Richmond. That's, that's a driver's track. That's you know? pretty good. Yeah. I mean, he was there. And, and the thing about that is I don't know why they haven't put Berry's name on the windshield while he's driving it. They still have Chase Elliott's name on it. Yeah, I think, right. and I understand it's it's Elliott's car. We just got a fill-in driver, but still, it's you know, it's Barry driving. It's not Elliott. Yeah. So that kind of I don't know. I'd want my name on there. I would too. But even if I'm like, oh, I think right when now. Kyle Busch broke his <laughs> leg and David Reagan was in for him, and uh, I think they left Bush's name on the car then too. <laughs> well, I don't like that, but. Who knows? I mean, it is what it is, but and I wouldn't saying, turn the ride down because of it. No, I'm not going to turn cool the ride down. It would be pretty cool to see my name on there. It would have been pretty cool for Josh Berry to give the keys back to Ellie and say, "Here, I won with it. We'll see what you can do." Right. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm glad he got uh, glad he got a second place. Yeah. Really pulling for him there. And Hopefully he's taking he advantage of the opportunity he's got. You know, he's yeah. not just out there driving in circles. Yeah, and, he's doing pretty good. So, yeah. and you know, you got Harvick leaving. You got Truex could be leaving at any time. Almirola. Almirola could be leaving at any time. So, you know, there's some older guys. There's some seats that are getting ready to open up. Yeah. Bubba Wallace could be leaving if he wants to be he, replaced. He needs me. to be replaced. So, <laughs> His words, not mine. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so there could be a lot of seats opening up. And uh, I think Josh Berry just kind of proved that he's one of the front runners for one of them seats. And uh, good for him. Good for him. He deserves it. Good job, Josh. That's right. We're proud of you. That's right. Um, and the best, this, uh, late race caution, this, uh, last restart of the race, when all of Truex's problems started, somebody else's problems started too, and that's William Byron. Yeah. I heard um, uh, he got his bell rung. He did get his <laughs> bell rung. <laughs> and it's not funny, but we'll tell you why we're laughing here shortly. Uh, but uh, no, Byron's been strong all year, and he was strong all day. Yeah, he was. He led quite a few laps. I mean, and you know, just as we've talked in the 
in the last 20 minutes of this podcast, you know, he's, he's running without his, his main crew chief right now. You know, we all, we know we're not retarded, but we know that these guys always have somebody behind the crew chief. Yeah. That's or the crew chief is on zoom. He's right. on a zoom call. You know, they're, they're always right there. Yeah. They've always got that guy right there. Uh-huh. Um, if not the crew chief, somebody they trust just as much. Yeah. So, but Byron has still been running strong without his crew chief, you mm-hmm. know. So, good job to him. Just make sure you stay out of Bell's way. Yeah, just don't get in Bell's way. Um, and I don't know if you've seen, you said you didn't get to catch the race. No, I as didn't. As soon as the uh, drivers got out, they went and, um, because the reason, the whole, I'll explain it real first before I get into what Bell said. On the restart, uh, Ross Chastain started fourth or fifth row on the inside. I don't remember exactly where he started. And I think Bell was uh, third row inside. So they're all diving down into turn one on this last restart. And Ross Chastain does what he does on these restarts. He just barrels into the inside, throwing caution to the wind. Whatever happens, whoever he bounces off of, he bounces off of. That's what he's shown in the past. That's what happened at Coda. That's why Suarez was mad. Um... <clears throat> but that's just what he does. That's expected, right? And um, but on this occasion, he he did the same thing. Now he didn't do anything wrong. He didn't make any contact with anybody. But as he's going out down into the turn, Bell is also coming down to hug that inside groove, going into one. And I don't know if his spotter told him or if he looked in the mirror and he seen that it was Ross Chastain that was there. He decided to not go down there because of Chastain's history with right. everyone. Um, so he come back up to give Ross the room, and when he did, I think he just over he just overreacted. He went up a little bit too high. He ended up hitting Harvick, and he hit Byron. He kind of doored Harvick door to door, and he hit uh, Byron right there in the left rear, which had Byron spinning out, yeah, hit the wall. That's never good. No, never good, especially on the last last restart and Byron had a had one of the dominant cars yeah, of the he day. He was going to be a top five, top three car. Oh, easy. Yeah. I mean, he he might have, he had a, a chance to win. I don't think he was going to get around Larson, but uh, he may have gotten around Barry for a second. But uh, he had a dominant car all day. Just got taken out by Chris Bell. And um, after the drivers got out of the cars, you know, the media is always running up to him asking him their take on this stuff. And they asked him what happened on that last restart with you and Byron, and he says, well, I just overreacted because the cannonball was coming down into turn one. And uh, they they said something about, Wait, what do you mean the cannonball? And he said, the one car. And uh, so he just kind of called, three or four times called Ross Chastain a wrecking ball, just coming in there like that. So they go to Shoe Ross. Shoe fits, I mean. Exactly. I mean, that's, that's what he's done over the past two years, and that's kind of why i'm not really a fan of ross chastain right now if he can clean that up i think i could definitely be a ross chastain fan he thinks out of the box he's not afraid to do this or that whatever it takes to win as we've seen it at martinsville last year um <clears throat> but he's a heck of a driver and exciting to watch but he still has some flaws he still has some things he needs to work on in my opinion but um so that finesse is what makes a good driver great Yes, you know, that's what is. puts you at the top of the yeah. sport. Um, but the media goes over to Ross Chastain and they say, hey, what do you think about Chris Bell's comments of calling you a wrecking ball? And he just kind of rolls his eyes and he's like, you know, he just walked right past me just a minute ago and he didn't say nothing. But if that's what he wants to call me, that's what's, what he wants to call me. I don't care. And like I said, Ross didn't do anything wrong this time. This one was, was on Bell, but after... Uh, after Bell went back to the tr- truck or got back home or whatever, he watched the replay and he sent out a tweet that he said, hey, after looking at it, he didn't do anything wrong. That was totally my fault, which props to him for admitting that because most drivers don't. But uh, still in the moment, I think he needs to be, don't overreact so much, you know. Um, but I really don't have a problem with him calling Ross Chastain right. wrecking I mean, ball you, either because you, you, I've called it worse. That's one thing, and and this is this is in life. This is in every sport. This is in business. Is you can't you can't buy reputation. 
And if you think about that, what I'm saying there is you can't you can't go to these people with ten million dollars and say, Hey, here's this ten million dollars. I'm a good driver, I'm good at what I do, I'm not gonna crash you. You know, that that they don't work like that. It right. don't work like that in racing or any other sport or in life or in business. The reputation that you have is the reputation you've earned. Mm-hmm. And and Chastain can't really be mad at Bell either for saying that because it, I mean you we know how fast them cars are going around. Oh, yeah. There. If you look in your little corner mirror there and you see the one car coming behind you and you're getting ready to go low, you're getting the hell out of the way because his reputation serves him. Mm-hmm. He's gonna punch you. He's gonna door you. He's gonna do whatever. Right. If he can gain one or two positions, he's gonna do it no matter what. Right. Because there's no repercussions. So, and I don't really blame him for doing that but at the same time it's just not right in that time um so we had that had a little bit of drama there with the name calling and the uh, suspenseful restart <clears throat> and uh larson ends up getting the win which is his first win of the season um he was another dominant car all day. He, I don't think he was as dominant as any of the Gibbs cars. You know, Hamlin, Truex, and Bell all led a lot of laps. They had dominant cars. And like we said, it's a Gibbs track. Historically, well, Larson, Gibbs does good. Larson's that guy that can take a, a 90% car and make it a 100% car. Yeah. He, he's that well man. Yeah, you know, he is. Mm-hmm. And that's the difference between him and some of those Gibbs guys. Right. You know. So, but uh, I was happy because, like I said, I'm a Larson fan, so I was happy to see him get his win, lock himself into the playoffs. Um, but that also kind of brings me to the next thing: Does crew chief suspensions really matter? If that's going to be part of the penalty phase, your crew chief is suspended for X number of races, and we've seen these Hendrick crew chiefs now have been suspended for three races with one to go and they've won two of those three races right so does a crew chief suspension really matter not really i don't think it does because like like i was commenting on earlier you know they've always got that that other hand right there behind the crew chief wait you know what i mean they, right I mean, you have to, to be a successful team, to plan for your future, you've got to have, you've got to have that support there. You know, if you're, you know, especially with what we've came out of in the last two years with COVID, right. you know, you've got to have that educated, experienced crew chief right there all the time that if this guy tests positive, He's, you know, this guy's coming in because he can do the job. Mm-hmm. So I don't think the crew chief suspension is as nearly critical as, as it was in the 80s and 90s. Yeah. Maybe early 2000s. Um, yeah, because I think back then they had to have a notebook that says, if this goes wrong, you do this. Right. If this happens, you do this. Well, the they... communication, the technology wasn't there mm-hmm. that we have these days. Yeah. So now, like we said, they're just on a Zoom call. They're right. not allowed to be on a property, but they could be at the hotel next door on a Zoom call saying, hey, okay, take you know, take a round of wedge out. You right. should be fine. Or, And it, it probably comes down to, I mean, I'd say that guy that is setting in for that crew chief knows exactly what to do with car adjustments, hands down. Mm-hmm. Now, where I'm guessing they don't have the experience at is from making those real-time calls on pit strategy and fuel mileage. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's yeah. that's where it's going to – that's where I'm going to call you. Yeah, calling them uh, last-second audibles. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, the, dri- the driver uh, suspensions are obviously crucial, mm-hmm. you know, critical to the team. But, I mean – you don't I don't I don't think you're losing a whole lot of ground when you suspend a crew chief these days. Right. I right. mean it's a very important job. I'm not trying to take away from that. But I don't think it's as 
crucial as, as it used to be. Right, it's not as detrimental to the team on Sunday if the crew chief isn't there right. now. And that's really all I've got um, about Richmond. I didn't get to see Richmond. I mean, as we was talking earlier, I didn't get to watch the race. I don't get that channel. Um, but I did catch the highlights on my phone, kept up with it throughout the day and stuff. But uh, I also had personal stuff to do that day, so yeah. it wasn't, wasn't nothing crazy. But yeah. um, <clears throat> Richmond's always a good race fans race, like I said last week. You know, it's uh, it's an entertaining. You're not going to see the big one or nothing like that, but, right. you know, you're. it's a good race fans race. Yeah. Well, it's a short track, and right. I think we need more short tracks on the schedule. You know, I know we've discussed that in the past, too. It, let's take about two or three of these road courses off of the schedule, and let's replace them with some short tracks. I think that's where your um, your fan numbers, I think, will go up. Right. Um, if you're if you're looking to pick up fans, I think the short track is where it's at, just because that's that's the grassroots of racing. You know, there is no local Saturday night bull ring that's a two mile out uh, two mile super speedway. You know, everything is short tracks. It's all half miles, quarter miles, five eighths mile, um, whether it's dirt or asphalt. That's that's the grassroots of Speaking it. So of that's it. what everybody starts out in. That's what all the family members are used to. Um, you know, family members of drivers. Um, you know, Joe Bob wants to build a car and take it down to the track. Well, he's going to have probably 10 members of his family going there, too. And that's what they're familiar with. That's what excites them. And that's what draws them to the sport. And I think that would translate also into the, at the top level. Now, having that Daytona and Talladega is, is critical, too, because that's just awesome. You know, if all you've seen is short tracks, you, you go to a Talladega or a Daytona... Well, and it's a it's a different style of racing, right? And yeah, we don't want to see it every other week, no. But those four times a year that we do see, you know, the two Daytona races and the two Talladega races, they're pretty awesome. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's it's like Christmas morning to me. Daggy mm -hmm. day is what I call it. Yeah, you know? <laughs> but fire up the grill, mm -hmm. get some cold bush lights out. There you go. Make an all day event out of it. But, uh, yeah, I would like to, would definitely like to go to Talladega at some point. I think we will here. Yeah. If not this year, probably next year. So, uh, speaking of dirt races, we got one coming up. That's right. We're about to get dirty. We're about to get dirty at the last Great Coliseum. Um, and we were there last year. Yeah, for we, the dirt race. Yeah, that's yeah. right. We were there for the dirt race. We got to see uh, Chase Briscoe take out Reddick right there at the very... Last turn. Well, it was the other way around. Reddick took Briscoe out. Is that what happened? Yeah. Yeah. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I I had Briscoe last year, and he was he was leading the last part of that race, and Reddick came up on him. No, I think he got it backwards. I think Reddick was winning, and Briscoe took him out. Well, <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll look back into that. But I'm, okay. <laughs> I think. Uh, but I know Reddick, I do remember Reddick had a dominant car last year at that race, and there was a lot of rain stoppage because it seemed like every 20 laps we were yeah. having to go run up underneath the stands because a big rainstorm would come, and then we'd get to watch the Crown Vicks dry off the track. And, but all in all, it was still a great race yeah, well, uh, leading was. up to the race. If you've never been to a Bristol race, whether it's the spring race, the dirt race, the fall race, um, it's just amazing experience. Um and, and I'm not talking about just in the fan zone or, or you know, the the driver's merch haulers and all the stuff that they have going on there. It's just, just the going out walking around the parking lot, just meeting people, you know. You go find somebody that's throwing some cornhole, and next thing you know, you're four games into a cornhole and talking to somebody you've never met from halfway across the country, and it's just a cool experience, you yeah. know, because everybody, everybody was friendly. Um and, you know, you know I've told people that in the past <clears throat> about going to going to Bristol. You know, it's a uh, it's amazing how you can have that many thousands of people in one spot. And Jed, you and I have went for a few years now. You mm -hmm. know, to this Bristol race, whether it be the NRA 
NRA night race or the dirt race in mm-hmm. the spring. We've went for a handful of years now, and it's a sellout every time we go. Yeah. Now, in all the years we've went, how many how many fist fights have you seen down there? None. Exactly. Only Me only almost seen one. With well, we've Chase seen, Elliott and Kevin Harvick. Right, and race. and Chase had Owen coming. <laughs> he did. You know, but the uh, that many thousands and thousands of people there, and we've spent all day there. I oh, mean, yeah. when the race starts at six thirty p.m., we're in the parking lot at six a.m. Yeah, and we've been there the whole day. We've made our rounds. We've been up to the track numerous times. We've been in the fan zone numerous times. We've been through the RV parking numerous times and, and you got briscoe's autograph there last year right at right. the dirt race yeah. so and we have never seen one physical altercation there no not one and that's pretty awesome when you get that many people together probably two-thirds of them drinking yeah and there's not a fight no i mean that's how awesome bristol is right it's just an amazing experience all the way around from from the fans to the actual track you know i mean if you've never seen bristol speedway before when you come around that last turn on the highway and it comes into sight it's like holy crap you know that is that place is huge it's amazing it's it's beautiful it's uh it's definitely something to see and then to walk in and uh, as you come in through the uh through the the walkway there and you come out into the stands and you can see the track and it's just a big it does really look like the roman coliseum when you're when you're going in there it's just it's just a big old round bowl of nothing but seats and a a big um, well it's actually it's a small track but it 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 doesn't look small it's a big funnel yes it's a big bowl it's a big bowl but um it's great. <clears throat> now we won't be there for the spring race, but we're hoping to make it there. We will make it there for the fall race. Yeah, we'll race. be there for that. Yeah. The, we we have to go just for the uh, the uh, Greek the restaurant. Greek restaurant right down I, the road. I never can remember the name of that place, but uh, I think it might be Mad Greek. So yeah, that sounds I think that's right. what it is, Mad Greek. But we went there. Uh, we went there last year at the dirt race. We went there first year we was down there. Yes. We just didn't and, have uh, nothing else to eat. It was amazing food. Um, yeah, easy the beer was the, good. Easy on the eyes there. Too. It was uh, good scenery. The um, it's you're just in the hills of Tennessee with a NASCAR track right next to you. I mean, what's not what's not to love about that? So the pizza there was amazing. They yeah. had great cheese sticks. I remember those cheese sticks. Those were good. Yeah. Definitely gonna get some more of them when we go back. Yeah. But so, uh, what uh, was you gonna say something? Sorry. No, no, I was I was gonna go right into the Bristol race. Oh, like that's you where were I was getting ready to. So. What kind of things are you looking looking to watch for? What things like that? I, I, here's what here's what I'll say about it is. Anytime you hear Bristol race, you get excited. Any mm-hmm. real race fan, you get that. You just get that mm-hmm. uh, that fire in your belly. You know that. Oh yeah, here we go. You mm-hmm. know, but then you throw dirt in on top of it. Dirt Bristol race. You know that's exciting. That's even more exciting. Yeah, because I mean, what? Well, hillbilly don't love a good dirt race, you know. Right. So I know I do. Right. So, so you know, but I'll I'll say my personal opinion. I mean, it's a fun race to watch. We had a blast there. Mm-hmm. Um, it's fun to watch on TV, but the uh, to me, just because there's no green flag pit stops, there's you know there's there's some stuff that's taken away from the race from your average normal NASCAR race that I like the asphalt not race better than I do the dirt race. I do too. I agree you with know? that. But it's a, it's it's exciting to get ready for. It's exciting to pre-game it. It's it's yeah. exciting to watch it. Yeah. But it just don't have the I don't know what the I don't they, know what they you each call have it. their own unique things about them. You know, now that they've moved the brisk, the uh, the dirt race to an evening race, because the first one was during the daytime and it was just a dust bowl. Right. Um, you can't really do that on dirt. You can't run that during the middle of the day, especially that long of a race. Um, but they moved it to dirt, and it 
probably helped the track that it rained as much as it did last year. So it kind of kept the moisture in the track. But uh, I think they each have their own unique characteristics. Even though they're both at Bristol, they both have something about it that makes it an awesome must-see, must-attend event. Yeah, and one thing I noticed from being at the NRA night race but the year before that, and then last year we go to the dirt race, was we seen more dirt race fans mm -hmm. last year, you know? And and that's one thing that I, I really like about the Bristol Dirt Race is it seems like it don't just bring NASCAR fans in, it brings dirt racing fans in, you yeah. know? And just to see what it's about, you know, tickets ain't expensive, mm -hmm. you know? And the more people that get involved and the more people show up, the better. Right. So, now something about this dirt race that I'm looking forward to seeing this year is the fact that Jonathan Davenport is going to be driving with the NASCAR boys in the uh, 13, number 13 college racing car. Um, now, if you don't know, if you're not familiar with dirt late model racing, Jonathan Davenport, his nickname is Superman. Um, We're about to find <clears throat> out. We are about to find out. I think he's going to do some really good things, um, but he is at a disadvantage. You know, obviously this is going to be his first time in a, a, a cup car racing against the cup boys, but uh, he's still one hell of a wheel man on dirt because, I mean, there's not a race, there's not a dirt race one that he hasn't won. Um, he's won... Eldora, the World 100, he's won the all, I mean, if you name it, he's won it. And there was a few years ago, he seems like he won almost every race all year. It's, it was like his breakout year. But And and to this day, he's unstoppable. You turn on any kind of, of a, I see clips on YouTube all the time now, Jonathan Davenport versus Kyle Larson in a dirt late model race at such and such speedway, and they're back and forth. So, I mean, it's it's awesome to watch. Um, so it should be interesting to see what Davenport can do with the Cup boys. And I've seen an interview with him, and and somebody asked him what to expect, and he said, "Well, these cars go about five on on at the Bristol track. The Cup cars will go about five seconds per lap slower than the than the late models. Right. So he's going to have to. That's going to be an adjustment for him. You know, when you're used to taking them turns at a certain speed." And, your reaction time differs. <clears throat> but that's one of the things I'm looking forward to at Bristol. And and another thing with this race is... The, there's some thunder outside. There's a thunderstorm going on. So if you hear some of that, that's what it is. We got a nice little rain day. But uh, And another thing that I'm looking forward to at Bristol is... No matter who you think is going to win this race or who you expect to run up front... That's not the case. <laughs> Never like is. Like we've seen the first the first year they had this, a couple years ago, I was expecting Larson to run away with this thing. Larson, Bell, somebody like right, that. Right, Larson yeah. or Bell was going to run away with this because that's who I picked to win the first year. And he he ended up wrecking, not doing very good. I think he still had a decent finish, but he got taken out way early. And Logano, somebody who wasn't familiar with dirt at all, ends up winning this thing. And then last year, you know, Reddick, who is a dirt guy, he was winning, got taken out by Briscoe. Am I right? You don't know. You're still loading. Okay, <laughs> we're looking it up to see <laughs> to see who's right here. But uh, and then he gets taken out by Bristol, and Kyle Busch ends up winning it. Somebody who's who was very openly saying we don't need to be running on dirt. You know, this is stupid. We got windshields in our car. We don't need to be running on dirt. And he ends up winning a race. So two dirt races in two non-dirt guys have won so what what you would expect on dirt you can kind of throw that out the window yeah. with this race um, and you know i mean even with that you're gonna have a dry track you don't have a wet track you know right weather plays we've into seen, that we've seen two different tracks two different years yeah so. and that's yeah because like i said the first year they ran it during the day you know, that heat, that sun is just beating down on that track. It dries that track out so fast. Just the sun dries that track out really fast, much less having the cars on it as well. That just zaps the moisture right out of it. And like I said, if you're not familiar with dirt, you got to have that moisture in the in the dirt. It just to hold it in there so the the dirt 
the dust doesn't kick up. Um, it affects the way the cars handle around that track. You know, you start getting the dry, the dry dirt turns black, and and they call it black slick, and it's just like driving on ice. You go to turn in there, you're gonna slide right up until you get into the brown and not the black. You're gonna slide right off that black. That track looked like glass last year. Mm Mm-hmm. And yeah, and last year with the rain, they moved it to the evening to prevent those problems. But then they had all these rains coming in of an evening, which kept moisture in it and. uh, I think it, it that made it a real racy track, but uh, still we had and it was it was a great great race, yeah, you know, really um, entertaining. But uh, so year three, what to expect? I don't know. We'll see. You know anything that you might expect? Like I said, you throw it out the window. Yeah, we'll see. I do know who I'm picking to win. I'm picking to have a good race. Hopefully he wins. But uh, who's your favorite? Not not fantasy, but who's your favorite? <clears throat> Throwing fantasy out. Throwing fantasy out. I mean, it's hard one to to pick a favorite on. Right, I've know? got three that could easily be the favorite, um, but I'd have to go Larson. Yeah, I'd almost have to. Between Larson, Bell, and Reddick, would be the three that I would say is. You know, if you told me they won, I would would not be surprised at all. See, I was right there with you. I'm saying Larson and Briscoe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and a lot of people forget Briscoe came up on dirt. I yeah. forget that from time to time. But fantasy league picks—that's who I picked, Briscoe. So, um, you know, he he was right there last year. A strong car last year. Very strong car, especially there late in the race. You know, um, so. I'm hoping he hasn't had the greatest of seasons this year so far. I'm hoping that uh, he can turn that around at Bristol, at least for this one race. You know, I so. took I took uh, Stenhouse. You know, Stenhouse. He's a he's an old dirt boy. You know, racing. He grew up in Alabama. Started his racing career there. He started out racing on dirt. So I was kind of just thinking outside the box a little bit. You know, wanting to go with somebody that. And he finished missed. second. Two uh, years the first ago. year, yeah. the first year of this, yeah. Yeah. So I'm hoping he can pull one out for me. Maybe a lot of people forget that he had some dirt experience. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't think you're going to see too many Stenhouse picks. No, the, and normally I wouldn't pick him because he usually screws me pretty good. Yeah. You know. But, I had thought about taking Busher, um, but I didn't. I'm going to leave that for another time. Yeah. I think I know where I'm going to pick Busher at, but. Uh, <clears throat> As far as Bristol, that's that's what I'm waiting to see. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing this year. Um, it's a 7 p.m. start, Sunday night, Easter. Sun, Easter Sunday. Easter Sunday, 7 p.m., Bristol Dirt. Action-packed, I'm sure. You know, Bristol never disappoints with that. Um, you know, seeing, like I said, seeing Davenport, seeing what some of these dirt guys, see if they can actually come through and, uh, and win one of these things. I wonder if old Bloomquist ever do that. He he ran. <laughs> he had a stint. I'm surprised he doesn't do it now. That's what now that they're on dirt, yeah. I know he had a NASCAR. He had a Cup Series stint there for a little while. I don't know if it was one year, maybe half a year, but he had a he had a ride there for a little while. Yeah, he got in some trouble. That don't surprise me at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the trouble usually follows that guy, but uh, but let's move into the fantasy. If you have nothing else to add to about Bristol, what you're looking forward to? Or no, I mean, I'm, like I'm just looking forward to an exciting race. You know, I'm looking, I'm looking forward with Bristol is looking, looking forward to the unexpected. You know, see what happens. Um, you know, there's not going to be a lot of strategy since there's no green flag pits. You can right. throw that out the window. Um, I'll be interested to see who's gotten better at dirt. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, see who's put the work in. I, I so. wouldn't be surprised to see Logano win this thing again. I mean, he finished. I don't want him to win. I'm not because I'm not a Logano fan. I'd, this but is I one of those allow, races. I wouldn't allow that to be said in this room. Right. So. I understand. <laughs> 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 I'm. Uh, I'm definitely not a Logano fan. But um, I, spe- I don't. 
I don't root against him as much as I used to. Yeah. But um, he isn't a Ford. I mean, so that's he cool. isn't a Ford, and that's kind of what's holding him back. I believe. You think I so? think yeah. I think if he got in a Chevy, you think he, that's why he's got he could two probably, top five finishes there. Yeah, I think if he was in a Chevy, he'd have won both of them. <laughs> <laughs> but I was gonna say, I, I wouldn't. It wouldn't surprise me if he was, you know, if he wins this because he won the first one. He finished third last year, so yeah. he's got an average finish of second. Right. That's pretty good. It's tough to count out. Um, yeah. But um, that's all I've got about Bruce. He's, he's a talented driver. And, I mean, I, I, I really don't care for the guy at all. But a lot of my a lot of my issue is, and I'm getting better about it, it a lot of it's my own fault. You know, it's not so much on Logano. I've just always kind of had that that blue collar good old boy feeling of your daddy bought your way in yes you know i have that feeling too but i mean when you strip it all down and look at the facts yeah his dad gave him opportunities that maybe you and i didn't have because his dad his he had a rich family you know he came from a very rich upbringing Mm -hmm. so he had opportunities that you and i wouldn't have had right and so some of it, when I talk shit about Logano, is probably a little bit of jealousy, yeah. you know. So, I mean, I'll, I'll take that hit myself, but the guy's a good driver. Very talented. I, but, yeah. but my, growing up in this sport, you've just got so much more respect for the guys that earned their way, that struggled that were working on their own cars that couldn't make a race sometimes because they couldn't fix it in time you know not you don't ever cheer for the guy that was well daddy my car my tie rods broke i can't go to the race this week well i'll just buy a new race car bub don't worry about it yeah. you know i mean but that that's not joey's fault either you know it's i think i think any race <clears throat> fan that had those that had those opportunities would take it yeah you know so part of the reason i i I don't cheer for joe Logano is my own problem not so much joe well what turned me sour on Logano was years ago um you know it was kind of his style he was one of the first guys that come into the sport and did not show that respect it was it was an unwritten thing that you know certain times this is how you're supposed to act you don't have to move over for anybody, but you need to race them clean if you expect them to race you clean. He was used to getting what he wanted. He was used to getting what he wanted. Kind of Everybody kind of looked at him as, like you said, the spoiled kid, daddy's money. <clears throat> and the time he ran um, Stewart, Stewart down into the grass at California, and Stewart's wanting to punch him and then punch him in the face, get a hold of him, and you got his dad right behind him wanting to fight Stewart. Well, What's Dad got to do with this? Dad wasn't on the track, and Dad didn't have anything Stewart to do. Stewart would be both their asses. I guarantee it. Yeah. Stewart would be punching one of them with the right hand, punching the other one with the left. <laughs> Build up. Probably talking yeah, I mean, shit the whole time that, he's doing and it. it. And it. You know, let something like that happen down there in, in Tennessee. That, in Memphis territory. You yeah. know who'd be showing up? You know Jerry be, Lawler. Yeah, absolutely. He'd be throwing, <laughs> he'd be throwing fire at Logano's dad. <laughs> We'd be straightening some stuff out right. right now. But that's what soured me on Logano was... Um, was the whole, anytime he was in an altercation, Dad was right there with him. And I'm just, you know, at when you're at that level, you're responsible for your actions. So if you need to get punched in the eye, my God, you're going to get punched in the eye. Dad, that's not Dad's punch to the eye. Dad shouldn't be fighting your fights for you. That And that's what's Dad should me. stay out of it, too. Dad should stay out of it, yes. Um, and that's, but you don't see that anymore. Logano is, <clears throat> he's matured, he's grown up, you know, he's, uh, and he'll tell you, if I if I messed up, he said, I'll mess up. But, well, like uh, I he, said, I just wanted to say that real quick. I know Logano ain't, like, he's still not my guy, obviously. Yeah, I don't think but he'll ever be my guy. Part, I'll be man enough to say that it's part of my problem with Logano is my own fault. Yeah. You know, so, but... That's who I am. Did you find it there? Yep. We'll play it. Let's hear it. 
This is a six to go. Reddick's in front of Briscoe. Hold it up there to the mic. Let's see if any. This is a clip on YouTube. Turn it up. Maybe. Who is that in front? Reddick. No, that's as loud as this goes. Okay. It's an older phone. Okay. So you got Reddick coming up. He's leading the race. You got Reddick Briscoe chasing him down. I think I seen us sitting there right there in the stands. Yep. Three laps to go. You got about Briscoe sitting about three, four car lengths back. Getting into lap traffic. Yep. Yeah. He's, he's definitely making up some real estate. Two to go. Now he's down about two car cool. lengths back. Oh, he's right on his back bumper now. Getting the white See, flag. I think Briscoe gets out in front of him and Reddick shoots in on him. Oh, they're on the white flag lap right now. Okay. I think Briscoe ducks down underneath to make that pass in three and four. Our internet just give out. It looks like it <laughs> froze up last, <laughs> right before, last turn. Right before we get to what we were looking for. Uh, but, it, but yeah. I remember, I, I remember that. Because I had and, Briscoe last year. Yeah. And I was, yeah, I remember you having Briscoe pick to win last year, and then he he kind of come out of nowhere in the last last X number of laps, and and had he been able to make that move clean, I think he might have won it, or it might have been a photo finish. Yeah, maybe I was just so heartbroken, I I didn't remember it the right way. And I remember you had you had Harvick, the, you had Harvick to win when uh, him and Chase Elliott got into it, and he was. Chase pulled had, it on the track and blocked him. Yeah, had Elliott not done that, I'm pretty sure Harvick would have won that race. Well, I'm I'd not pretty still, sure. I know Harvick would have won that race. I mean, he just had to card him. I'll tell you what, and I've said it on this podcast probably every week that we've been on here. It's a sad situation for Chase Elliott, you know, having a broken leg and all. But I'm still so sour over that episode that where he came out and blocked Harvick that yeah. if he walked in here right now, I'd probably put him in a figure four leg lock. I guarantee it. Wouldn't even feel bad about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was really hoping that Harvick would dump him. I was hoping he, he was going to dump him. Yeah, but, but all right. But he showed him that respect that, you know. That's going away. That's going away. He uh, he should have dumped him, you know. And, and, and uh, he should have dumped him, not just the respect aspect, but at that point, Chase Elliott was lapsed down. Chase Elliott was doing it for a teammate, not even himself. Well, he was doing it just to piss Harvick off because he felt like Harvick cut his tire down. So he said, you take me out of the race, I'm going to take you out of the race. Well, I mean, basically but what I'll, block, I'll block, you know, if I'm in that position, I'm going to block about anybody at the end of a race mm -hmm. just to keep my position. Yeah. But when you do it for, and you're out of your laps down. Yeah. And you're affecting the guy running second. That's right. That's not cool. I mean, right. you know, you're most tracks, that. they have a flag for As that. As NASCAR says, you're affecting the outcome of a race. Exactly. Possibly a championship. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, he just didn't admit to it. No, yeah, when I, you're the I, golden child, I mean. Yeah. I mean, I thought it was obvious. You know, yeah. we were sitting in the stands there, and I, I could tell what was going on 50 laps to go. So, I'm, I don't see why NASCAR couldn't understand that, but, uh. They have a flag just for that purpose. Most people don't know. I've That's heard a, of that. It's a blue flag with a white stripe going from corner to corner. And uh, you're supposed to get out of the way of a guy faster than you behind you. That's what that flag is for. Get out of his way so he can go. And uh, I don't know if that flag was used. I'm pretty sure nobody even really pays attention to that flag anymore. But, uh, but Chase didn't get out of his way. And if I was Harvick, I would have definitely dumped him just for that reason. Yeah, it and turned then, into a pit thing. Yeah, and well... It would have turned into a pit thing afterwards anyway. Right. Um, it would have turned into more of a pit Harvick, thing. Harvick, like you said, versus, with the Larson and Bubba thing, Harvick was a bigger man than me that day. Well, Harvick was probably doing that out of respect for his daddy, you know, more so than Chase. Maybe. Maybe. Um, but 
I think as soon as the helmets came off, I would have just dotted his eye. To do it again, you'll be losing the whole car. Yeah. You know? But, uh... So that's what I got about Bristol. Um, let's get into these league things, you want to? Sure. I've got something to say right off the bat. I know you know what I'm going to say. And I'm going to tell you, I'm surprised I'm not in trouble with HR this week. I thought for sure... Well, uh, when Christopher Bell took out William Byron, HR was going to be ringing my phone right then and there, because it's obviously my fault. <laughs> well, I've got, I've got some cliff notes here for you, Chad. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's see, let me let me get into this. Well, let me quick. hear you. HR give you a message. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. So. So the backstory to this, Scott, our HR guy, he's in our league. He had Byron. He picked Byron to win the race. And Byron had Dominic Carlyle. He was the only one that picked Byron. He was the only one to pick Byron. I had Bell. You had Bell. There was a few other people. Uh, A couple more people had Bell. Let's see. Chris. Joe T. Jerry. Chad and Justin. I forgot to mark Justin on there. Had Bell. So we had five people that picked Bell. But I knew I was going to be the one that got in trouble. I knew it. Oh, well, no, he, it he got me, too. Okay. Yeah, he got me, well, too. at least he's... But he, he doesn't tell discriminate. Me. He said, make sure you, next time you talk to Chad, let him know. I'm going to put his ass in a camel clutch. <laughs> and after he taps out and says, Scott, you're the man. Yeah. I'm going to do a double J strut on his ass as well. Okay. <laughs> and... <laughs> I can picture him saying this. Yeah, that, that's exactly what it said. Was hmm. he's going to put your ass in the camel clutch, make you say, "Scott, you're the man," and then get up and double J walk, <laughs> do the double J strut right out of there. Huh. So, what what you got to say to that? Well, I do know Scott dropped seven spots. That's what I got to say to that. I moved up one because I took Bell, and my guy didn't wreck. Yeah, I took Bell. So. uh that's what I got to say about that. If you had a real wheel man, he would have kept it straight. You know? <clears throat> like my guy did. Like Kevin Harvick right behind him, he kept it straight. He got hit too. But uh, Scotty, you just picked the wrong guy. Wrong day. Wrong guy, wrong day. It happens. It's happened to me more than once. Yeah. It probably happened to me this weekend too. Oh, I'm, I'm just waiting for it to happen <laughs> to me. It happened to me numerous times last year, and I know it's coming. It's just a matter of when. If I can survive these next three races, I'll feel pretty good about it. I'll be interested to see who Hunter takes on the dirt. I mean, it don't Does really it matter. matter. <laughs> no, it don't really matter. It don't matter at all. <laughs> I mean, he could, really... pick, he could pick B.J. McLeod, and B.J. McLeod will get his first career win or his top three. Right. You know, that's just They're... how Hunter rolls. Right. So Because he picked, who do you have last week, Logano? Mm-hmm. Logano finished seventh. Yeah. This is that was not a Logano track. No, but it was a it was a racers track. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I, I expected Logano to Logano to get a top ten. I was hoping he'd get thirty five just for the was, fantasy. Yeah, league. I was pushing for thirty six, thirty seven. Yeah. So, but uh, I'd have been a lot happier if Bill would have done that to Logano than Byron. But it was yeah. still pretty cool. Yeah. To be on this end of it for once. Right. Seeing Hunter drop about seven, eight spots is what I'm really looking forward to seeing, just because I haven't seen it before. You know, I've seen me drop ten spots in one race, like I did just a couple weeks ago. Um, Dakota, because I picked the dinger. Thanks a lot, AJ. Um, yeah, I mean Hunter's just <clears throat> one one bad race from from you know dropping down fifth or sixth spot. Yeah, he's 10 points up on second place. Um, oh, Chris Louie turd. Yeah. He's in second. He's been, it's his first year in it. He's, he's been pretty impressive. He's been pretty impressive. Yeah. So we got a few first timers doing pretty good then, huh? Uh, okay. Hunter was in there last year, but. Yeah, I remember Hunter last year. He, he ain't hit bad luck yet. No. Uh, and, and I'm going to tell you right now, Hunter. In season when, and a half, he ain't hit bad luck yet. When you do hit bad luck. You really look at life a little bit differently, you know, for that little stretch that you're having bad luck. Because that was me all year long. 
Yeah. Uh, you need a support group. <laughs> you got Kentucky Tony in third. Yeah, Tony's he, doing pretty good. Yeah, he's not doing bad for a wildcat. Yeah, well, we all have our flaws. Right. Nobody's perfect. <clears throat> no. I, I admitted mean, mine a while ago, you know. I right. talked about my flaw about Logano, you yeah. know. Yeah. But Tony, I don't think he can really get into his. Not on public radio, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> right. Jess is still hanging in there. She's fourth. She yes, dropped she a is. spot. She didn't like that. She did not like that at all. Well, I mean, she thought the world doom and gloom. Well, I mean, she's taking what fifteen steps forward, one step back. That ain't bad. Yeah, that's what I said. You know, last week you you were in the top ten and you moved up four spots. I said that just don't happen all the time. So you're doing good. Yeah. If that's but, if that's her biggest uh, hill to climb. She'd be all right. Yeah, she'd be doing all right. She's got a little tight little bundle there around her. You got Tony in third, all the way from third place down to, well, fifth, but there's four people tied for fifth place. Yeah, you got Riggs, uh, Jeff, <coughs> Joe, and Jerry. All four. You got the four J's. Mm hmm. Josh, Jeff, Joe, Jeremy. Yep, and there's 70. You got a seven point difference. Tony's in third with 70, and then you got the four. Fifth place, they're tied with 77, so that's tight. And I noticed <clears throat> Josh and Jeff picked the same person. Mm -hmm. They were tied last week, picked the same person, so they're still tied. And then you got Joe and Jerry were tied last week, picked the same person, so they're still tied. Yep. And Joe and Jerry picked Bell, so they moved up four spots apiece. Mofat's moving up. Yeah, he moved up a couple spots, and then you got Scott moved down seven, which I circled on the big board I here. I see that. I got circled that he fell seven spots. He's like he, a rock. Yeah, he fell like a rock. Um, we'll see what he does this week. I don't know who he's picked. He's he's told me he's got two people he's considering, but I don't know which one it is. Well, I just, he's already he's already gave me his pick. Oh, did he? Which this don't get. This is Wednesday right now that we're recording this, and yeah. Chad don't post this podcast till. After 7 p.m. Thursday right. night. That so, way nobody hears anybody's so we pick. And I've already it. locked in my pick, so I'm not getting any inside information. We we keep this as fair as possible. We don't want yep. nobody to think we're so, cheating. So, Scott is taking Reddick, number 45. I thought about taking Reddick. Oh, Red Dick. Oh, Red Dick. He, uh, he almost won it last year. Would have got his first career win, but... Uh, this wasn't his day. Maybe we'll have what happened last year. He took Reddick, I took Briscoe. Here yep. we go again. I'm going to be in trouble with HR, just like always. <laughs> Nothing new to me. <clears throat> uh, we got Earl. Earl moved up one spot. He, I don't remember did who he, he took Did he week. pick or did his wife pick? I'm sure his wife picked. He moved up a spot, so his wife, Sonia, picked. Okay. So anytime Earl moves up, that's because she picked. Okay. If he moves down, that's because he didn't listen to her. And he needs to do that every week. He just needs to listen to Sonya because she's obviously the brains behind that operation. Um, I pulled up one spot, one point behind Jeremy. I'm going to pass him this week. So, yeah. Uh, but we got, who's that right there behind Scott? One point behind Scott. Yeah, that's, that's old, old hillbilly here. Yeah. Yeah, I'm right. I'm I'm. I'm drafting. I'm right yeah. on his tail. I'm about to dump him like Bill did Byron. I guarantee it. You so, should. I mean, you if should. he don't get out of the way, you know. And who'd you pick? You picked Stenhouse. I that's picked right. Stenhouse, yeah. You got Stenhouse. He's got Reddick. Stenhouse will dump him. Yeah, he will. He won't. He he don't care. Yeah. Stenhouse don't give two shits. No, he don't. No. His car don't even have a brake. No. Or clutch. Don't need it. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, that, that'll that be interesting to see for next week. Let's see if Justin can uh, leapfrog Scott. See if I can pass my big brother. That's right. <laughs> no, no. That way you're in trouble next week and not me. Right. I'm sure keep, I'll... Keeping it the family down That's there. That's right. Uh, Mom, yeah. she, she sent me and you a message. She did? Earlier in the week. She did? What do you want, what do you want to comment <laughs> on that? What do I want to comment on that? Yeah. I talked to her Saturday, so... Yeah, well... I done got um, my earful. She she got on to us because we did not um, mention... Uh, that we need to mention her in... 
if she she does really good. And I told her, I said, we, we will. We'll, <laughs> we'll definitely give you props as soon as you, you know. Pick up. You do something. She, but she, she's good. had a rough go so far. She has. And last year, last year she was kind of all over the place. She did really good, and then she had a little streak of bad luck, and then she, she straightened it out. So she's... She was everywhere from the top to the bottom to the middle, back to the top. I I've, yeah. I've never seen nobody move around the board like she did last year. But well, Jace, Jason Jason has been he's been doing pretty good at at moving around the board yeah. quite a bit this well, season. <laughs> yeah, this this <laughs> He's hanging out right there with Lou. He's uh staying with mom there right at the bottom. Yeah. Right now. But right now. He he's him him and mom both are or They're those... one good race away from jumping up six, seven spots. Right, though. and and they've been known to do it. Mm-hmm. And if anybody does, I don't, I don't doubt that they would be the ones to do that. So, Lou, if you're listening, you pick that winner. We're gonna give you them props. Yeah, but you got to do that first. And you know, uh, <laughs> another buddy of mine, Tyler. You know, he's just sitting in twentieth right now. He's he he's always been that guy that the first half of the season. He's usually up there in the top five or six the first half of the season. And it's not uncommon to slip a little bit, you know. You, mm-hmm. you have things happen, you know. But uh, I tell you what, I mean, six races in, and I don't think he's been in the top half of the... I don't no, think he he's was, been in the top ten yet. He was dead last a few weeks ago. Right. I mean, he's he's made some improvement, but he's... You know, there's been a lot of people... That's just had a rough go this year. Tyler, mm-hmm. Jason, H, and Mom, Lou, are are three of them now. Paul, <laughs> Paul just, yeah, yeah, Paul just Paul. You know, right. I mean, he's a. <laughs> we talked about that last week. Right, I mean, he's a. <laughs> he was he, down at the bottom. He stays down there, season. you know, yeah. just because I mean. And Tyler, out of twenty six people, Tyler is now in twentieth, and Paul is tied with him at twentieth. Right. So. They're not at the bottom. I think Tyler is moving up. Uh, uh, Tyler's going to go in the up direction. Yes. Yeah. The difference between him and Paul is, is Paul's a UK fan and a Dallas oh, Cowboy fan. Oh, my gosh. So, I mean, he's got, I mean. He's got. Yeah, there's not much all, you, yeah. It's I mean, all aligned against he's him. He's kind of destined to be at the bottom. Right. You know. Uh, he works, I don't I don't know if any any truck drivers out there listen or not, but he, he works at the truck stop down there around Bardstown. <laughs> Uh, I've heard that. Yeah, Paul does. I've heard that. So, Tyler, who's an IU fan, he uh, he's in, he's in the upward swing right now. So that's good. Paul, I know I know you just you if you're listening, you got you got you got all the thing everything going against you, brother. But you can pull out of this. <laughs> You can you can do it. Yeah, you can do it, ball. Just believe in yourself. <laughs> Let's see who else who else we got here. Brian is below me. I moved up one spot. He moved down three. I don't remember who he picked last week. Brian's kind of all over the place with his picks. You know, I think he picked Blaney at Coda. I was like, I don't. But he did better than I did because I picked the dinger. The box. He is thinking outside the box. Didn't do too bad. Um, gonna have him on the show at some point. He yeah. said he, he said he wants to. He said he wants to get in here and and record a show with us sometime. So it's just a matter of making that happen. But uh, what do you think about old Jeremy? <laughs> He's he 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 likes to. He likes to talk. He likes to talk, don't he? he? Does. <laughs> He definitely likes to talk. He's a Ford guy, though. Yeah, that's yeah, that's a good thing. Well, it depends. I mean, if you if you're talking Ford versus what Toyota or Honda or something like that, yeah, I will take the Ford. You take the verses right out of that but sentence. I take the, you know, I mean, if you're, you can't really brag about a Mustang though. And and Jeremy has a Mustang. He was telling us about it, showing us pictures of it. it looks good. Looks good for a Mustang. But I told him if he'd take that blue oval off the front and he added a, a bow tie, that would add 50 horsepower just right so there. What, I mean, what's the Mustang's competition, Camaro? Because you know they're... Anything with you, a bow tie you, on the you, front. You can A Silverado. You know, a Silverado you, you know they're, beat a they Mustang. Announced, they announced 2024 was going to be the last year they're going to make Camaro. Yeah, I see so that. That's, that's, there's a reason for that. It's a sad day in America. 
No, there's a reason for it. I mean, if you if you invest your money for years and years and years into something and you don't get you don't get the desired result, you hang it up. Well, I think it's more of yeah. not really getting the desired <laughs> result. I think you're getting more of the uh <clears throat> we've been at the top of the hill since we've since we've been born, you know, since what was the first year of a Carol Shelby, Carol Shelby changed all that. No. Carol Shelby ain't got nothing. Not on a, uh, not on a Chevrolet. I mean, he's don't get me wrong. He he can make a Mustang a little bit better, but it's still a Mustang. You know, you, you can is, put all the makeup you is. want on a pig. It's still a pig, right? I've tried that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that don't surprise me. I've learned to not ask questions sometimes. But let me ask you this. Okay. Have you ever seen a Camaro that would outrun a Ford Maverick? No. <laughs> no, never seen that. Okay. <laughs> that was Ford's big mistake right there. They let the Maverick go. Because um, the Maverick was supposed to replace a Mustang back in the day. Well, Scott, Scott, could, Scott could even vouch for us on that. Well, that's what I was going to ask you because he, a few I mean, weeks how many, ago. How many times was he sitting in that passenger seat and he couldn't even, <laughs> he couldn't even raise his head forward? Right, his, his cheeks were peeled back because right. he was going so fast. Yeah. Oh, quite a few, let me tell you. But uh, he, I remember in the first, what, first or second episode at the very end, you said something about there's a story with a Ford Maverick at the lake. Yeah. And I didn't know nothing about this. And this is... 25 years later? Yep. What is that story? I don't remember who was there. I don't even remember if I was driving or Scott was driving. But you were at work. You needed some cigarettes. Mm-hmm. And we went to get you some cigarettes. Well, like Iola was just a short distance right, <laughs> out of the way. <laughs> They okay. got a pretty good sized little parking lot. Mm -hmm. Some nice curves around the lake. Yeah, yeah. They got a and boat I, ramp there too, which is what worries me. Well, it was, this was on the opposite end. I don't know why they have a boat ramp there, I but they either. do. <laughs> so you pull cars out. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but I don't. Like I said, I don't even remember if it was me or Scott driving. But it had been raining. And, which you, you remember how much horse the Maverick had. It was off the scale. Right. <clears throat> this I mean, was a 73 Ford Maverick. Right. I've seen cars that, when you stomp the gas, that'll just smoke the tires. But yeah. in this Maverick. It would melt them. Well, in the Maverick, the all you had to do was let off the brake. Yeah. And it would smoke them. You didn't have yeah. to touch gas. You just let off the brake and it started. Factory inline six. Right. Yeah. And it just started white smoking them. Mm -hmm. So... We was up there on that northeast corner of the lake. Ground was wet and everything like that. So, oh, you could lose control real quick in a oh car yeah. like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I think there was a cop cruising around the lake, too, so at it. some point. you know, They knew every time the Maverick was on the road. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I think they had a tracking device on that thing, but they couldn't ever that. catch it. No, couldn't do it. So, so needless to say, turn the wheel left, let off the brake, and... Started eating some shit. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. Well, there's a pretty good bank there. It goes down into the water with that car, that Maverick was staring right down at the water. Okay. So, fortunately. <clears throat> and you don't remember who was driving? I don't. Because one, ma one makes me a little more nervous than the other. It was it was me or Scott. Well, that, and, that's what I'm saying. If it's Scott was driving, that makes me a little nervous. Right. Well, and I, like I said, I. My mind's been through a lot right. in the last 25 years. <laughs> <laughs> and I understand. I remember the night clear as day. Mm -hmm. But I remember I remember you needed cigarettes. We took the Maverick to get you some. We ran up by Lake Iowa. There was a cop sniffing around up there, just having some fun. Pavement was wet. Let off the brake and shit happens. It happens. That's, right. Yeah. So, I mean, fortunately, it didn't go in the water. That's good. So, that's, that's a good, good. thing. You know? Yeah. Um, that would have been hard to explain. That would have. <laughs> but, but uh, you know, Scott, he had those with Bill Omega. 
Yes. You know. And that you, was a good car. Right. You had the Maverick. Mm-hmm. I mean, there was a lot of back and forth, mm-hmm. you know, running those heavy metals. Yeah. I, you know, I mean, my first vehicle, I used mom and dad's minivan for a little bit. With grain that. on the side. Oh, yeah. Uh, I remember we were drag. well, should I say that <laughs> yeah, if yeah, mom's listening? Mom knows. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I remember we were dragging an old, che- drag racing an old Chevelle one night. They were talking shit. Yep. And they didn't believe us when we said this minivan will beat the brakes off that Chevelle. Yeah. And it did. When when mom got in that van one day, we put our helmets on. Right, mom got in the van one first. day, and the the front <laughs> the two front seats of that van was bucket seats. And when mom got in that van one day, she seen that racing helmet sit between the two front seats. <laughs> Justin, <laughs> what you been doing? I can hear it now. <laughs> Safety first, mom. You made me wear my seatbelt. Why right. can't? Well, I mean, why should I wear a helmet? The belts you know? were tight, and so was the helmets. Right. I mean. <laughs> Well, but you know, I mean, in all honesty, when you pull up next to somebody in a minivan and they, and they 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 start barking at you like they want to race, and you put a you put a fucking heart helmet on, yeah, that they, they they shit a little bit. Yeah, they take it serious then. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure that if I remember right, now just like you, I've been through a lot in my day. If I remember that night right, they pulled up next to us and they said, "Hey, you want to run them?" Well. It's me and you in the car. We're not backing down. Right. So we said, yeah, let's do it. So we went out, found the road. It's an old uh, back, back road. Street. Didn't have any lights on it. It had one down there. That's where we raced to. That was the finish line. And uh, <clears throat> the passenger of the Chevelle is the one that said, I'll say three, and on three we go. And I'm pretty sure they took off when they got to two and a half. Right. They, they jumped the start. And the wood grain... Chrysler minivan beat the car. Yep. 78 Chevelle. Yeah. Nice one. Yeah. And he said, that ain't fair. You jumped. Let's do it again. So we said, okay, let's do it again. And I don't remember who was going to give the go on the second race, but the second race I don't believe ever happened because no, when didn't. we went back to the starting line, we stopped to turn around to line them up again, and they kept driving. Yep. He didn't want that second race. He, he asked didn't. for it, but he didn't want it. He got embarrassed in the first race. Right. And I'll tell you what, and a lot of people don't know this, but yeah, that, that Chrysler minivan had wood grain down both sides of it. Mm-hmm. Whenever, whenever, <laughs> we, and I'm not going like to say, I'm, yesterday. I'm not going to say the guy's name right. on there. Right. But he was well, embarrassed that night. Yeah, he was. But you know, he had splinters in his grill. That, I don't doubt that. That wood grain, that, was, that, was that fan flying. was so fast, yeah. splinters were coming off that wood grain yeah. and stuck in his grill. Mm-hmm. So, Probably still there today. Yeah. He, Embedded so deep, you ain't getting them out. Yeah, he ain't getting them out. But, I mean, that that minivan, I could maneuver that sucker. Yeah. I mean, you remember right there in front of the hospital that time? Uh, there, That was back before they made the lane changes and everything up there. And we left Mom and Dad's house. And mm-hmm. I had my helmet on mm-hmm. and we was coming towards town and traffic was stopped right there and i passed all them people on the right yeah you know but mm-hmm. sometimes you just gotta do that you know what i'm saying you, it was a necessary move right yeah my spotter wasn't in my ear right i just had to go with what you i had it. yeah exactly so i wasn't slowing down no <clears throat> belts were tight helmets on exactly you gotta get to the front right yep that's what happened well, I can't believe our HR never did tell me about that Maverick story. Yeah, he, I'm sure never he remembers did. it. I'll have to ask him. Uh, he he might remember some details to it that I don't. As a matter of fact. I'm sure he probably will. Right. But, our, yeah, that's... HR Scotty has more details memorized than anybody I've ever seen. Yep. <laughs> He'd probably tell me what I was wearing that night. I'm sure he probably could. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and I'm sure that we've got a lot more stories like that that we can tell. Yep. We're going to save some of them for the off season when we don't have a whole lot to talk about as far as NASCAR goes, but we're going to be deep diving into some big stories. Yep. <laughs> and I can tell you, you're not going to believe half the stuff that you're hearing, but I will promise you that every one of them is true. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Word for word, it is true. But, uh. Last words on the standings here, Hunter. We're coming for you. Did you say who he picked, or has he picked yet? He, I believe he has. Let me see. It doesn't matter who he picks. I hope they get wrecked. 
Unless he picked Briscoe. Well, Donovan Don't. just turned his pick in. Uh oh. Kind of thinking outside the box, too. Hmm. Little D is outside the box. That don't surprise me. Yeah, he sure is. <laughs> I don't think see Little it. D's ever been in the box, has he? Nope, he, Hunter has not turned in his pick yet. Well, whoever you pick, Hunter. I respectfully hope they hit the wall, unless you pick Briscoe. Um, well, I mean, even if he does take Briscoe, I'll take him at the wall. I'm sure you will. <laughs> <laughs> you're both in front of me. Yeah, I know it. No? No, you're behind No, I'm behind you. you. Okay. <clears throat> you got to worry about Scotty. Yeah. Well, you got to worry about Sam and, and Little D there, too. Yep. You don't want Little D behind you. No. You got to watch. You... you know how them Kentucky boys are. I know. They get behind you. Mm-hmm. So, start thinking weird shit. Yeah, uh, every time. But Donovan took number 31 on the dirt. Justin Haley. Really? Yeah. What do you think about that? I don't think... Uh, I think Donovan's probably going to 27. I think Donovan's <laughs> going to fall down this week. <laughs> I really do. And I, I, I root for Haley. You know, he's one of the little guys in the sport that is coming up, and he's putting in his time. He's putting in the laps. And he's in a Chevy, so I know you he's like him. He's in a him. Chevy, so, you know, and he's he's one of my favorites, but I just don't think he's going to do a whole lot this week. No, I think uh, unless Hunter picks Haley, Donovan's going to fall to 27th. <laughs> I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. But he's, you know if Hunter picks Haley... Haley's going to finish top five. To yeah, might as well. No point, no point in even running the race. Mm -hmm. so we shall see we'll get through this bristol bristol race um we'll come back next week we'll talk about what happened hopefully we can talk about hunter dropping about four or five spots um and we'll talk about martinsville coming up that's always a good one looking forward to martinsville you know that's that's another joe gibbs track seems to be um so and another thing i was going to tell you real quick you check your thing. I'm gonna tell on her. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and rat her out. Jess, last week picked Martin Truex, but you didn't highlight it on her her picks that she's she's burned him up. Really? Yeah. Okay. She's awesome. used him twice, so you got marked that, so she can't keep using him because she loves the Truex Junior. Yeah, but he's a junior. Right. You know. You know what they say about the juniors. Yep. But uh, but I just wanted to throw that out there real yeah, quick while I'll I was thinking about it. it. So yeah. I anybody. If anybody's listening that listen that is involved in our NASCAR league, it's hard to keep up with everything. As far as you know, I might get a score wrong occasionally or yeah. miss miss high, not highlight a car number it when happens. I should. But uh, let me know, you know, just like Chad is. Let me know so I can correct that. Well, I'm throwing my wife under the bus right now. Oh, know, I, know I don't are. want I don't want her using Truex at Martinsville. I'll blame you because uh, he he can do okay there. He's it's one of his tracks. But it's, if him and his Crew chief ain't getting along. That's right. We could have trouble another... if there's trouble at home. It might affect his driving. It, it definitely will. And he's in a Toyota, so yeah, you know, he's always behind the eight ball there. But uh, yeah, we'll look ahead to Martinsville, <clears throat> and we will. Let me look real quick before we sign off here, real quick. I know we've been on for a little while, but I'm gonna check just to see if these suspension. This appeal board has said anything. Oh, yep. It upholds colleague penalties. Amends the point deduction. So he's going to be without his crew chief. So it says the decision upheld the fine for colleague racing just for the 31 car of Justin Haley. Uh, the decision upheld the fine of $100,000 issued to the number 31 NASCAR Cup Series team of driver Justin Haley and the loss of 10 owner and driver playoff points, as well as the four-race suspension levied to the crew chief, Trent Owens. However, the team was restored 25 driver and owner points for the regular season, bringing the total penalty to 75 points in each category, rather than the initial 100. So they gave him back 25 points instead of the full 100. What do you think about that? Yeah, I trust them to do the right thing. That's what they I get think, paid to do. To me, to be honest with you, I think it's bullshit. 
Yeah. I'm going to call bullshit right now. They did the same exact thing that Hendrick did. Yep. You, that's what I they said. They got the you same exact them. fine as Hendrick got. You trust them to do the right thing, and that's all you can do. Because they appealed it, they got something back. But whereas they only Hendrick, got 25 points back, whereas Hendrick got the full 100. Right. And that's where we need the transparency. Why is this different? Right, and that's what I'm saying. To me, I feel like it's because they appealed it. They didn't just go with the flow. You know what I'm saying? Right. Hendrick just went with it. Yeah, we'll take it, whatever. We'll take it on the chin. We'll make it up down the road. But Hendrick's obviously got more money and attributes. Than Better lawyers. Him. Right. <clears throat> I just... Well, we were just talking. Who'd you say just took the uh, 31 car, Jeremy? Donovan. Donovan. Well, like we said earlier, he hasn't started serving his penalties yet as far as the crew chief of that car. But now He'll have he's going to now. be out at Bristol. So yeah. that may have something to do with this. Um, <clears throat> but no, that that was the whole point in our discussion on that. Uh, the, the uh, what we call it, the... Uh, the board. The uh, appeals panel? Yeah. Well, not the appeals panel, but the um, the backup NASCAR board. Uh, the backup board. I don't know what you mean. Well. You got you got NASCAR that it, and initially levies the penalty, and then they want to appeal. The teams want to appeal, so they go to appeal panel. Right, but the... Uh, does well, I guess what I'm getting at is that panel still has a say even if they don't appeal in it, if, even if they're not appealing it, is what I'm getting at. You've got the well, <clears throat> I don't, I don't think they do. I think the the team has to appeal and make their case for an appeal, and then the appeal panel comes into play. So if Colleg just said, "Never mind, we'll serve the suspension, and we'll, you know, your penalty is final. We're not going to appeal it," then they just get what NASCAR hands down. The appeal panel will not come in and say, "I think that was a little bit strict. I think that was um, a little much." You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, is I know what you're saying. Lines? I was thinking, I, I was thinking back to there wasn't just a NASCAR board. You have the Shit, we've said it 15 times. Um, you have the the other panel that says we agree with this or we don't before it even gets appealed mm -hmm. uh, is where I was going with that. Uh, before NASCAR can even say this is what's happening, NASCAR can give, they can hand out their ruling but the other panel is going to say, no, no, hang on now. We did it different here than we did it here. What was the other panel we was talking about? You think I can remember that? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't remember. Um, you've, you got the NASCAR, <clears throat> and then you have the appeals panel. I just maybe I just, I'm thinking something different. You could be. I'm not. I'm not sure what you're thinking, but uh, apparently they can appeal this appeals board decision because it says, barring a final appeal, Owens, which is the crew chief for Haley, will begin serving his suspension this weekend at Bristol Motor Speedway. And I'm getting this from NASCAR.com. Um, and will be eligible to return for the race on May 7th at Kansas. And it gives the names of who was on the appeals panel. Um, but I just... I just think that's bullshit. In my mind. Yeah. To, I mean... It's, it's not really... It's not really crap on NASCAR's part, because they levied the same penalties for the same reasons yep. 
everybody got the same. No matter so, how big or small the team was, right. everybody got the same thing. Exactly. So as far as NASCAR goes, um, they they're, not, right. they're not in the wrong, to me, my opinion. They are doing what they said they would do. It's the appeals panel it seems to be all over the place. Now, if it was one of these situations to where Haley's team borrowed a louver from the Hendricks team mm-hmm. and didn't know that they had illegal louvers in the truck, you know what I'm saying? It right. could, could, you know what I'm saying? I mean, they knew Hendricks had illegal hoovers in the truck. They were supposed to be to hand it over. Mm-hmm. So, was it a situation where Hendrick and Colleg both went to the appeals board and said, "Look, he needed a, a louver. We gave him one. We didn't disclose that they might be bad." Yeah. So maybe that's what I mean. Maybe when more details come out, we'll know. Yeah, we definitely need more details on right. this. On understanding why that there's a difference in the two punishments. But will we get that? That's that's probably going to be one of the main questions. Right. Is why? Why are they different? And it, and it could be just like if you go to court, it's all in the case that you present, and that that could be what it boils down to. Hendrick maybe made a better case than what Colleg is making. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. That's. That's the breaking news, yeah. Because um, that wasn't out there when we started recording this, and now it is. Um, I'm gonna go back and see if they have done anything with Hamlin's uh, penalty, and I don't see anything on here. So maybe that'll come out tomorrow on Thursday. So be watching for that. I'm sure that they they'll I, stick to that. Yeah, I really believe that they're gonna uphold. You know, the fifty thousand dollars ain't gonna bother. You know, especially when uh, you know. The same weekend he got dinged fifty thousand dollar fine penalty for that, or mm-hmm. you know a few days before he got penalized, he when Josh Bear or Josh uh, Williams parked his car on the start finish line. Yeah, Denny Hamill was the first one that spoke up said, "I'll pay your fine." I'll pay it. I'm getting a couple of texts from Earl right now. <laughs> he sent me at uh, Josh Williams T-shirt it says "Park it." I'm going to have to get one of those. And then he sent me a thing to show in these uh, penalties. And then he made the comment that uh, here comes the conspiracy people <clears throat> about Hendrick being the the golden team of NASCAR. Right. And with these suspensions, it's looking so. They're kind of showing it. It's kind of looking so. Maybe this is a, maybe it's, I don't know. I'm not going to get into that right now. Maybe that'll come for next week. Once we, once we get some more information, then we'll we'll talk about that. But uh, until then, that's all I've got. You got anything else to add uh, to this? I don't. Um, no, I like appreciate I appreciate everybody listening and riding the wall with us one more time. Yeah, that's right. Keep listening every week. We're gonna do it. Um, like we said earlier, we have a website now, ridingthewall.com, um, where you can catch past episodes you can um fantasy check out standings. our fantasy standings they should be up to date soon after the nascar race we're still kind of playing with that kind of getting that lined out but uh and i'm hoping to have like a discussion board so people can chime in talk to us and we can yeah. we can interact with people maybe get some more people in our fantasy league for next year yeah we'd love yeah. to have that that'd be pretty awesome you know? yeah um, so, so check that out, uh, stop in, give some traffic to that website, keep listening, uh, we thank you very much, everybody who is listening and following along, um, and we'll be here every week, and, um, that's all I've got. Yep. So. Let's squeal the tires and hit them right in the face. That's right. We'll see you next week. <laughs>